Take you along for this ride. Today we're going to be talking about exhausts and more specifically the IP exhaust and IP standing for inner tech performance exhaust which I've had fitted to this F12. Now to start off with I'm going to talk about the reason the whole point that this exhaust got fitted in the first place and that's honestly and truly because the standard F12 sound actually isn't that great. You would think it would be phenomenal. It's you know practically their flagship car, it's their flagship engine. It is a V12 with 730 horsepower that revs to eight and a half thousand revs. Uh, and you would think that they would absolutely scream, but I think my take on this is the fact that this is actually a GT car, it's more of a, a Grand Tourer. From the get-go, Ferrari probably toned the noise down just a tad. And as a result, to get the sound out of the F12 on a standard car, you've got to be on it. I mean, you've got to be really, really on it. The valves, okay, they open up at around 3,000 revs, the stock valves, but it's not until you really get up the sort of six and a half, seven to 8,000 RPM band that, that that engine really comes alive. Now, that all sounds well and good. The problem with being on the sort of six and a half, seven, eight thousand RPM mark in an F12 is you are absolutely flying. Like, you're up there, man. And I've said this in a previous video, that territory is either prison or dead, right? So with that in mind, standard F12, you have to be really on it in order to sort of extrapolate the most out of that engine and exhaust sound. Funnily enough, while I was at Goodwood last Sunday, a gentleman approached me, uh, he owned a, a black F12, it was beautiful, and he surprisingly said that he was a little bit underwhelmed by the car. Not from a performance point of view, not from a driving point of view or anything like that, he said it just didn't sound great. And I know exactly what he's saying. So the first thing I said to this guy was, take my word for it, the biggest piece of advice I can give you to change your whole experience in an F12 is stick an exhaust on it. Now, to the purists out there, to the guys that think, you know, Ferrari build the perfect car, that might sound like sacrilege. And I understand because I was always that guy. Cars of this caliber, I was never a big believer in sort of tweaking with them and, you know, sticking on sort of aftermarket parts. But it wasn't until I heard an F12 with an aftermarket exhaust. <laughs> It was like, holy shit, what is that? You know, it sounded absolutely mind-blowing. It was the evocative sounds of Formula One. You know, when Formula One was naturally aspirated and it had that high-pitched howl. So as soon as I heard that, for me, I was like, that's a different car. It's unlocked a completely different car. And now I'm gonna take you through my experience of living with an aftermarket exhaust. I've gone with IP because I heard plenty of great things about it. It was actually the exhaust that I heard that actually changed my whole outlook on fitting exhausts. So I went IP. Now, this is actually not the complete package. I've only gone cross pipes back. So it's cross pipes, uh, boxes, and tips. Tips don't actually upgrade the uh, sound, they just look cool. There is a complete stage with IP, which does from headers all the way back, and it's pretty much straight through. The reason I didn't opt for that was even when you tone it down on the valves, it's still incredibly loud. And I use this car so often. In fact, I'm about to approach 10,000 miles on the F12, and the majority of those miles have been with the IP exhaust. 
The best thing about this system is that it is totally independent from the rest of the uh, electronics and setup on the F12. What I mean by that is some manufacturers of aftermarket pipes for the F12, 45A, they actually dial in their valve control to work in conjunction with the Manatino on the steering wheel, which at first sounds well and good because it's all built into the car, there's no need for a valve remote control, but what I found with that is when it's built into the Manatino, the valves generally open up in race. Okay, and you don't really have any other choice over that. You kind of just have to have it in race mode. And you don't always want to drive around in race to make the car sound nice because gear shifts get more aggressive and you don't always want that hardcore ride in order to get out that hardcore sound. Whereas when you have the control of the exhaust separately, it's independent from the Manatino, you can control it as and when you want. Meaning you can put it in wet mode and still have it sound like an F1 car. Okay, so we're talking about this exhaust system. This little thing here, this is where all the mayhem happens. So this is the valve control unit from Inatech. I have quite literally just blue tacked it down there. And what's quite cool is that this panel here on the F12 slides across like that and it just hides it, which is quite cool. Anyway, so simple buttons on off auto. Auto I never use. So what auto does is it measures the throttle angle and opens up the valves automatically according to how hard you're pressing the throttle. Um, I basically only want it on or off um, so I've never actually used that. That's the kind of system that the car comes with as stock and I, I do find it sometimes that it's quite barky it doesn't ever uh, come on exactly when I want it to but off and on is where it's at now off there's there's times when a bright red f12 is obnoxious enough <laughs> um, and you don't want to you know roll through your local village or through town uh, just being loud uh, so off literally just dials the whole thing down um, so let's just demo the difference here between on and off. Now we are currently stationary, sat in a lay-by, and the car is in neutral. So, it's now off. I'm not sure if you can hear the idle sound of this car, but right now it's fairly tame. Okay, so let's rev this in off and then compare it with on. Rev, okay. Think that sounds a bit odd. Like, I mean, it, it's cool, but remember, keep in mind it's designed to make this thing quiet. It's not designed to sound awesome. Off is off, okay? Now let's stick it on and see what this thing's really all about, okay? So, now listen to the idle tone now as well. It should just barble some more. Oh, even the valve, like the valves have a blip. Okay, so we're now in on. So the valves are on and wide open. And listen to the difference, okay? It's just ape. It's absolutely amazing. I hope, I really hope that the microphone on this camera is doing a good job of picking it up because in here it's like ecstasy. Cool. So that's the, the difference between off and on, etc. Now I think what we need is to really hear this car from the outside. We need some drive-bys and ultimately we're going to have to culminate in a tunnel run because tunnel run, let's face it, for petrol heads, it's, it is nectar of the gods, audio nectar. It's just the best thing ever. So let's go and film some drive-bys and then let's finish off with a tunnel run. <laughs> See you tomorrow.
find a tunnel. I've been around here before, and I'm pretty sure that there's a tunnel up here. It's a bit short. And also, capturing tunnel sounds is actually pretty difficult because your natural instinct is you want the window open to get more noise in, but then you get lots of wind noise. And then if you, if you close the windows, I don't know, the noise isn't so good. But um, believe me, when you're in the car, going through a tunnel in this thing is like being in the Monaco Grand Prix tunnel. <laughs> During, during the F1, mid F1, it's mind-blowingly cool. So I hope even just a small percentage of this sound comes through on camera because it's something I really want to share with you guys. So we're approaching it now. Sometimes I don't like doing this because there's lots of traffic around and I don't want to come across like an obnoxious douche. <laughs> Kinda of hard when you're in this car, but let's let's give it a go anyway. <laughs> it just it just never gets old. I really hope it's going through on this. It sounds like an actual F1 car. But when they were awesome, you know? It sounds like a really good F1 car. Good God. Whatever they did with this exhaust and that engine, together, mind-blowingly fantastic. Like, goosebump inducingly so. Oh, I love it. I love it. And right now, look, I'm getting carried away with how good it sounds. Check this out. It is an automotive wonder. It's unbelievable. What on earth? Wow. Yes, so that's how it sounds. It's amazing how this car becomes two in one. It can become this luxurious, plush Grand Tourer and then you open it up, and it's this mental animal. Anyway, so now, right now, I'm gonna wind down these windows. We're going nice and slow. It's in, it's in wet, which by default makes the suspension soft. If you just chill. Now, listen to the difference when you accelerate, when you've got the valve closed, to when you have it open, okay? So right now, this is valve closed, third gear, right? Weird sound. In fact, you're probably getting more wind noise. But it's a weird noise. Okay, we're in fourth. I'm downshifting there. Hardly anything, right? Second. In fact, it's a weird noise. It's really odd. And that's because the valves in this thing are throttling back so much emotion. You know, it's this like valve that's like, no! Holding back all this energy. And you can actually hear that. I can hear exhaust just exiting and just hitting the uh, valve and it just look listen to it. it sounds like a really strong gust of wind it's really odd but that's not the mode that you would drive it in on these roads you're on some beautiful tight twisty english country roads now plenty of opportunity for downshifts you would never drive it like that you know on this road you'd open it up like so hey hey and all of a sudden, the sounds of Italy just appear from nowhere. <laughs> Fabulous thing, it's an absolutely fantastic thing. Well, I started off this video in the sun and it looks like we're going to finish it in the rain, such as England. But I think... <laughs> Sorry, straight road, had to overtake. I think, I was just going to say, to summarise, <laughs> the exhaust unlocks the exotic nature of the F12. And for me, I guess the best way of concluding it is that the whole experience
since having an exhaust on, on this car is now a very special one. I think when you're buying this kind of car, when you're experiencing or, or, en or enjoying it, <laughs> God, it goes like hell. In this world of engines going turbocharged, engines downsizing, I think the fact that we still have naturally aspirated engines in this world is is something to, to, to truly cherish because I think when our kids grow up, we are going to be telling stories of when I was your age, we had these things called V12s and they were absolutely fantastic and all we're going to have is classic car events and YouTube to share these things and the fact that there's companies out there like IP and other guys making exhausts that unlock the full potential of those engines that is something to behold it's something to celebrate and if you're in a fortunate position to be exploring one of these cars I can't recommend highly enough to just unlock its true nature with an exhaust so yeah You've heard it in the tunnel, you've heard it along country lanes, but ultimately, and I keep coming back around to this when I talk about cars and supercars and what they're all about, it's all about the smile. That's what it's all about. It's about the emotion, it's about the feel good, and the best thing I can say about an exhaust, and I suppose this applies to pretty much any car, is that it unlocks the smile factor. It unlocks the child in you and those noises and sounds that you always sort of imagined were when you were driving a super fast supercar. Thanks for watching guys. See you next time. Ciao.